Hey everybody, this is Frankie Dave from Frankie Dave Models. Okay, for this cheerful Thursday evening, I have for you before your eyes my papers too. This is the Hobby Boss 132nd scale B24J Liberator. Okay, this will be video six. Right now, these wings are not glued on here, guys. I went ahead and last night I butt up the fuselage. I got the Sperry turrets all masked down, prepared for painting and priming and painting. And I uh, have the uh, yeah, it's all buttoned up together. Got the transparencies in there. Instead of putting that dumb liquid mask on there, I'm gonna go ahead and, and make the uh, some pet, some masks out of this tape here. Mask up my windows that way I can pull them off. Because every time you start loosening up all that darn film for that doggone liquid mask, it's only you push out those windows. I don't want to go there. These windows are too big to dabble up with uh, uh, a crystal clear or or I don't use tacky glue. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some maskings and mask these windows off. Right now, I've got the turrets all masked off. This thing is very exceptionally heavy. I let the waste compartments open that way. Anybody who wants to take a piggy boo inside there, you can see a lot of detail in there. Because once this thing is buttoned up, all that beautiful detail that's been incorporated in this model here, it's it's, uh, it's gone. I mean, it's the same thing like a real airplane, guys. One to one scale. You walk up to a little airplane and look at it, you don't know what's inside there until you get inside of it. Well, no one knows what's inside this thing unless they look at the earlier videos, how I built the thing, like everybody else builds it. So we all know it's there, fellas. It's like Magoo spaghetti sauce. It's all there. I'm going to elect to leave the Bombay doors open. I'm going to paint this thing all the drab, neutral gray. And uh, I'm going to start doing some research. I think it's a waste of money and foolhardy to go out and spend fifty dollars for a set of decals for something like this. And uh, I imagine this stuff cheaper out there. A model this big, you can probably um, you can find you can find uh, you can make your own decals for something like this. This can be all all drab. It's all be tonal shades of all drab. This thing here, uh, at first, I had a lot of paint schedules I had in mind on this thing at first. At first, I was going to go, well, that aluminum, my aching ass, sounded like a pretty good value paint schedule for this thing. Oh, this thing is big as a buzzard, I tell you that. Whoa, right now. Not since love gets poked in the eye with a god darn stubborn wing of a B24J Liberator. And I was going to go ahead and um, paint natural aluminum, use my special aluminum, I mean, adding acetone on there. So I elected not to. Okay, Faye, what's the next choice you can do? Right. I'd make a formation ship. All white with red and blue polka dots on it. And a red tail with a white hash mark. Man, that's, I said, no, I better not do that. That's very, very tedious and time consuming. I got hole punchers I could punch those discs out, guys. That take a lot of time. So I'm gonna make this thing a model grab bird out of it. I'm gonna go ahead and, and see if I can get me some nose art for this thing. Or I can just use it on the kit. I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and use it on the kit. I'll go ahead and paint it. The schedule right here. It'll give you a bunch of selection to choose from. The yellow draft, the old day version. But on the yellow tail, what I'm going to do is do some research. I may, I may just go ahead and order me another set of decals cheaper than those. One third second scale. All I need is nose art. That's all I need. And there's plenty of nose right out there. This, ever since this model came out about four years ago, I bet, there's, I bet there's a lot out there. Anyway, draw decals are very expensive. I think what it is is because it's a custom decal sheet called Witch, Witchcraft. That's what it is. The only flying B7, B24 that there is. These wings come off. I did that on purpose. I had to modify the spar, the cape. So I can slide these wings off. I've already done it. I test fit it. It works perfect. The box this thing came out of 
will be its own coffin. I'll keep it buried in that box. What I mean by that is that I take his wings off, I put it on one side of the box, take the other wing, put it on the other side of the box, put the fuselage in the middle of it. I can close the box down and keep her in there as long as I want to for transportation and everything. Because I've already, I've already experimented with it already. So don't throw that big box away. If you guys, if, if, if you, uh, if you have no room to store this thing, I highly suggest is just modify that spar a little bit. You got to cut the little tits off on the end of it because they slide down that little kind of groove inside your wing and they'll lock in there. Once you lock in there, you can't get them off there. And so I clip them off so I'd be able to slide this wing off out of storage. This is a big airplane. The wingspan's about, oh, about four feet, about 14 inches. It's big. As you can see, it's huge. I'll start making some progress on this thing. I'm really getting, I'm really, uh, I'm getting the bug, getting the mojo shot, shot in the ass, but I think that's what, that's what it is. You get a little shot in the ass, mojo. Got me some of this Bondo spot putty. I use my favorite putty of choice. Last night off camera, I spent about seven hours on this thing last night, just buttoning up the fuselage. This fuselage is perfect. I use a uh, Krylite glue on it. And I just filed it with a, with a sanding board. And after that, I just buck that so it's nice and smooth. It's all prepared. Just run a thin bead of this on there, ready to go like that. I'm gonna stuff tissue in here. Mass off this also. The canopy will be masked off and be in place. But before I do anything like that, I gotta add seat belts to the side there. I'll put the seat belts on the seats right there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mask the cockpit. I'm gonna put it on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and mask the cockpit here. And put it on here with a gun side set, bomb, bomb, bomb side set, and prime this bad boy. I'll go ahead and put the tissue underneath here in the bomb bay too, to prevent overspray from getting inside as well. Then I go ahead and get a good prime job, a light prime job using pre shading black. When you pre shade all your pattern lines, you know, you just feather the whole airplane out. Just give it a, it's like black smoke, like soot. Make it look like soot on there. That's your prime job because you got some beautiful looking panel details there. You don't want to obscure them using primer. But use that primer paint, it'll fill in those pores as I uh, find detail on there. And it'll be a skirt and all the detail will be lost. And so yeah. So far my build experience right here is not up is, that's not speed built or just nothing great and fancy upstream. It's just I've been on this thing off and on now for about four or five years now since I had this thing. Since my Ruthie died. I remember her getting this for me for Christmas. And uh, since my baby girl died, you know, I haven't uh, worked on it because of this trailer. I got to think, wait a minute, Frank. You can work on this thing. You, you just think you can't work on it here. You can't work on it when it's all built to the tire like it is now. If this wings are glued in here, ain't no way I could build this thing at this point here. It's too big. So I use my head, slide those wings off, Subassembly wise, I could work on the fuselage by itself. I didn't glue these down because I'm glad I did it on purpose because I got to do a lot of masking on these tail for the color, for the squadron color stick they have on here. So I could pop those tails off, I could top the, the, uh, the tail off the fin, and I could mask and paint the same. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy with this thing. You know what? Uh, the wings fit real flush against the fuselage. There's no filler. Because like I said, these wings come off. They'll slide right off. Now, next step I'm going to be having, wondering, is the uh, the landing gear. I may have to get me a metal or a brass landing gear set. I think I will do that. At this video, I'll get online and order me some uh, uh, skill conversion uh Scale craft conversions that they have. Um, you got metal landing gear because I think the, 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 the nose gear ain't too bad, but this thing weighs almost five pounds. I, it does, it has some weight to it, guys. It really does. Anybody has one of these big buzzards, have a good place to put it at where you 
it's, it's going to be out of harm's way because you don't hit the dang wing when it's hanging on. You got to have a spot for it. So, uh, but like me, I just like I said, I designed just go ahead and clip the uh, the clips on the end of the spar. And just take the wings off and put them in the box, juice large, and whammo. Bada bang, you're done. You can put it away. It says, where's that B24 at? Frank, it's in that box right there. Oh, I know. Wait, I found that. I'll take the bottom juice, pull the box up. You can see it in there. So that's my suggestion, you fellas. If you want to have something big like this, you don't have the room, just got the room, just build some assembly wise like I did here. When you get done, take the whole thing apart, put it back in the box, you close. That's what I did. This whole thing was just like this when I pulled it out of that box right there I got. The wing is one side, the fuselage was the middle. Close it down. And don't glue these. These are, these are tight. They fit very tight. Don't glue those. I took those glues, took those pins off so they won't hit the top of the box. And just make sure you don't turn them upside down. Keep the flat side up. Of course, use common sense there. But anyway, fellas, uh, I'm really happy with this big B24 Liberator. You know, there's only flaw to it. It's like back here in the wing root. It should come down more like this, like an angle. But I don't think they caught that. But it is a B24J Liberator. No mistake about it. It's big. When you build big, you can't go home. And, go, and uh, wherever it is, they say, go big or go home. So I ain't going to go home. Or I build them big at home or no home. Pit issues in it. The only fit issue I had, I forgot to mention it, is up here, the turret up here. It's very tight in there. When, they, when the turret floor on the Ford, on this Ford turret here, Another thing, too, I don't like, <clears throat> there's a seam, how the turret's assembled. It's not my fault. It's the way it's designed. This thing would be a lot more better if they would have made a plug on this thing and and, and have the, there may be uh, an aftermark out there that's, well, that does replace this turret. If there is, this thing, this turret will pop off. Same thing, the after will pop off. If there's such a thing, if, if they do have an aftermark for this, Turret replacement back here. I am think I'm going to go buy that. But right now, I'm pretty satisfied like the way it is. I put a lot of time. It's not going to be bad. It looks pretty good. Like I said, there's going to be a seam up there. It's going to be very... It's flush. It'll be flush together, but you can see how it's put together. They, they don't look right, especially in a model like this. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't buff it out either. Because what that seems there is that permanently. Yeah. So guys, I highly suggest get yourself a B24. There's a lot of there's a lot of research out there on this thing, fellas. Get on your search engine and just and just go ahead and click B24 Liberator. And just, there's all kinds of images, pictures of it, and everything. They got a lot out there on this thing. And also going to do some research on the one thirty second uh, nose work, the nose right detail for B24 Liberator. They're probably cheaper. If they, I think that was just probably a custom uh, a custom decal uh, witchcraft. That's probably what it is. But anyway, uh, witchcraft ain't going to be. Now I heard that tr uh, was it Hong Kong models, Hobby Boss. I think it's Hobby Boss. Yeah, Hobby Boss is making a 148 scale of one of these. Must be the replacement for the monogram one. That too is a witchcraft job. I think you got to pre order that before they come out. They're probably out now floating around somewhere. I don't know. But I got too much right here in my hand right here. This is a beautiful plane, guys. It really is. They call it the Flying Coffin. A lot of people, a lot of airmen didn't like to fly these things because of that. And uh, the fly of the B-24 is a whole different kind of aircraft compared to a B-17, although this is supposed to be the successor to the B-17. It can go faster than the B-17. It can carry a lot more bombs than the B-17. It has a lot more payload, which is true. B-17 came out back in the 1930s. They had Boeing. And uh, the, those guys right there designed it back then. This thing, which is 1942, after, just right after... Pearl Harbor was attacked. They're building these things like that will run. 
they were building all these things for the war. And uh, my problem, a lot of air crews had a problem getting out of these things. I can see why, because, like I say, you got in the B-24J, even a D model, you got three men. You got a bombardier, you got a gunner, and also you got a navigator. And they travel all the way from this point here, they got forward here. There's like a tunnel to go through there. You go through the tunnel, and they got the landing gear. Once they tracked it, you're, you're on a catwalk. It's right, right at the outside of that wheel to get to the compartment. And that's where they bail out to you from. You're going to a subscription spend or something like this, you've had it, you're a dead man. I was also no pay schedule to make it a TV four Y. All blue, you know, like it's on all the P the deliveries they used back in those days were the D models for the PV four Y. But the, right here on the J model, they converted a whole different, they redesigned the whole airplane. They got rid of the, uh, the, the double vertical stabilizers and put a single one up. It comes way up like this. And I had two big old gun blisters over here. Same fuselage, same wing. Just modification. They got, they got rid of the brace guns. And they had big old blisters on here. On the side, they had a single tail. But this is a nice airplane, guys. I highly suggest you guys get one of these. For the money, I saw one eBay for $168 in one. Man, I can't believe something like this is cheaper than the Hong Kong models, but there's pros and cons on this thing. Okay, I'm going to push you Betty by over here before you knock something over and poke me in the eye. Put you right over here, you big bird. Okay, guys, I got another, another uh, heads up for you. Since we're on this uh, B uh, B24 video here, I got some good news. Our, be our beloved uh, Mr. Fred Duarte, he sent me a cockpit for the uh, TBD Devastator. I made one video of this, guys. Something told me, yeah, you should have made that, Frank. Something to click in somewhere. But I was so just. I was so disgusted myself, I threw that thing away like that. I could not believe it. I've got the masking right here. The mask is right there. I got to think, maybe you did you did take it out and you misplaced it somewhere. I checked my Helldiver over here, my Hell Helldiver. It's not there. I threw it away in that box. So, ready uh, to the rescue. And God bless you, Freddie. Thank you very much. He's a very wonderful person, guys. He really is. He's, he's got a good heart. He's generous. He's been very good to old Frankie Day. And uh, he saved Frankie Day's bacon. So there will be a final reveal of TVD as soon as that cockpit gets in. It hasn't arrived yet, though. So it'll be here probably by Saturday or tomorrow sometime. And uh, when it gets here, it, uh, the final reveal will resume. Anyway, I deleted that video. Freddie says, go ahead and get rid of it. Just delete that video and start over again. So it's can't do, Freddie. And uh, so I, I said, you took the words out of my mouth. That's what I'm about to do. Now, that changed everything right there. So I got rid of that video. So that'll be the final reveal of that TBD will be so I get my canopy on it. And uh, it should be all done. I'll be on a hell diver, too. But I got that little bit going good. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I have a live action on it with my camera applying my filler on top of the same seams I had before. Use my spatula. Yeah. May have that tonight. Live action. So stay close to that. Maybe something to do to keep me going. And I'll be able to start working on some engines and get them popped in and painted and start doing some. Uh, Masking and priming and whew, painting. 
Okay. That's it for the day, for Frankie Day. And the V24, that's the conclusion of video 6, I think it is. And, um, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Like I say, there's no fit issues. The only fit issues in that kit is around that front turret right there when it snugs in because it makes it so tight for it to join. So you got to make sure all that flashes, all that thing is completely sanded down good. So the, the stern turret, I mean the, uh, the after turret, Tailgun tail Charlie, he, uh, it then went together like, like a snap, no problem. But there's so much inside that first turret. Uh, forward just to kind of put just push it out so i got it pretty good and uh i buffed it out and everything so it's nice so i get some paint on it look like a turret yeah there's no so far there's no other fit issues in that and so you just got to be careful you and be careful just follow the instructions best way you can and try fit try fit to a perfect fit you know how it goes it, it builds this thing builds itself like i say a, a good teenager kid 14 15 years old should have had no problem building something like this. Just take your time. There's a lot of parts. There's a lot of reference out there to say. So this will be an olive drab and the neutral gray bird. And uh, that'd be it. Okay. Make mama happy. Take care of the little ones. Stay focused when you drive. Be aware of your surroundings. Get kicked crazy. Get yourself a kit. Pull out the mothballs. What you got to do? And uh, winter's not over with yet. We got to break today. It's 51 degrees after today. Sun shining. For the first time in two weeks out here in Ohio land. I feel halfway human now. Okay. We'll see you guys uh private night live action. This is break day signing off. And you guys take care of yourself. God bless you and thank you very much. God love you all.